America conquers the air. If you ask any student even in elementary school why the town of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina is significant to American history, they will know the answer immediately. They will know that this was the place that Orville and Wilbur Wright made the first working airplane and discovered that man could fly. Today, with thousands of airplanes taking to the sky at any given moment and the experience of flying high above the earth as common as riding a bicycle, it seems that a world where men did not fly is as far away as the ancient Romans. But we have to travel in time back to the days before the Wright brothers made their phenomenal discovery and the invention of the first aircraft when there was a time when it was firmly believed that man would never fly like a bird and indeed, a man was meant to never fly but always be a terrestrial being. We can be grateful that the Wright brothers did not hold to that belief. The date of that first successful flight was December 17, 1903. It was on that fateful day that Orville and Wilbur successfully flew the first controlled, powered, heavier-than-air airplane. This breakthrough ranks as one of the greatest inventions of American history and in truth, one of the great inventions of all time as a man had been dreaming of being able to fly as far back as we have primitive drawings illustrating that dream. The Wright brothers were well suited to go through the tedious research to finally create a machine that could accomplish this feat. We all know that great inventions are often the results of hundreds or thousands of failures and tests by which the inventor refines his ideas and makes new discoveries that take him to step by step toward that final breakthrough. That was certainly true of the Wright brothers. Our reference to flight becoming as common as riding a bicycle is well chosen because it was the Wright brothers' vocation as mechanics repairing printing presses, motors, and bicycles that gave them the knowledge of the inner workings of such machines that were needed to create a machine that could sustain flight. Their work to perfect the design of the common bicycle leads them to believe that conquering flight was not a question of providing sufficient power to the aircraft as it was providing mechanisms of control and balance to properly keep the aircraft steady with sufficient consistency that it could take to the air. Long before that first successful flight, the Wright brothers conducted their research. Using their bicycle shop as a makeshift laboratory, they first experimented with gliders and unmanned aircraft to refine their theories and their designs. But finally, on December 17, 1903, they achieved their dream of manned flight, even if only for a short time. Orville Wright's account of that first flight is scientific and understated. Wilbur started the fourth and last flight at just about 12 o'clock. The first few hundred feet were up and down, as before, but by the time 300 feet had been covered, the machine was under much better control. The course for the next four or 500 feet had but little undulation. However, when out about 800 feet the machine began pitching again, and, in one of its darts downward, struck the ground. The distance over the ground was measured to be 852 feet, the time of the flight was 59 seconds. Little did the Wright brothers know that entirely new industry would be built around these simple experiments. Moreover, they had achieved a dream man had dreamed for centuries, to actually be able to fly above the ground and come back safely. It is truly one of the great accomplishments of American history. American Inventions the history of how America emerged as the premier superpower in the world is about more than just a great military or a homeland so rich in natural resources that we were able to become the breadbasket of the world. There are many forces that combined in the American experiment that has made this country so great. One of those great forces is the phenomenal inventive minds that have graced America virtually since its inception. Starting with the powerful mind of Benjamin Franklin, the history of inventions that started in America and transformed the world is lengthy indeed. The computer has become so much a part of our lives that we forget that it was once invented. The history of the development of this futuristic device is long and filled with genius. The actual first prototypes of the computer were developed by the Defense Department, which is oddly the source of a lot of the great innovations in American history. But it was the early PC developers including Steve Wozniak, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates that took the computer to the level of familiarity we know it to be now and made computers a part of our everyday lives. Most world-changing inventions have a profoundly positive influence on mankind's quality of life. But an invention that did not improve life but destroyed it is also an American invention that changed the world. That invention, of course, is the atomic bomb. 
Developed by the fabled Manhattan Project, this bomb changed everything about war, diplomacy and the way nations relate to one another. And to find a positive amongst all the death the bombings in Japan brought about, that bomb may be one of the key elements that brought an end to a horrific war, World War II. And in the long run, that is a conflict that the world breathed a sigh of relief when it came to an end. There is a joke that makes its rounds frequently during political jesting that Al Gore invented the internet. If he had invented it, he would be a world-changing inventor for sure. But it is not out of line to declare that America invented the internet. Again, the original primitive retype for what became our modern internet was the work of the American Defense Department as a measure to ensure that America's computer security was guarded by decentralizing the network. From this simple goal, the vast World Wild Web has emerged that has transformed everything about how we look at communication, information, and knowledge. We have American ingenuity to thank for that. But of the thousands of American inventions that have done so much in the fields of medicine, technology, research, and communications, none can compare to an invention by a brilliant thinker by the name of Henry Ford. That invention, obviously, is the automobile. Just like with some of the other inventions we have talked about, we can hardly imagine a time where there was no such thing as the automobile. Mr. Ford's amazing invention literally transformed society not just in America but around the world. From it came the freeway system and an overhaul to how cities and towns are organized and linked together. And while there are downsides to the widespread use of automobiles, it has been a huge leap forward for America and civilization as a whole. And Mr. Ford, like any of the inventors we have talked about and thousands we have not, would see the betterment of mankind as their greatest calling. America has hosted this great calling for centuries and will continue to produce brilliant inventors such as these for a long time to come. Benjamin Franklin Sometimes when a country is just getting organized, its citizens are considered to be uneducated, out of touch or primitive. But exactly the opposite was the truth when the great American experiment began to take shape. The world did not see America as provincial or simple and that is due to a large part to the work of the man many that many have called the first American. That man was Benjamin Franklin. Benjamin Franklin stands out amongst those we would call the founding fathers because he was neither a military man nor a politician. He was one of the few we think of one of our nation's fathers that never served as president. But that does not mean that his contributions to the start of this great country were not profound and far-reaching. Benjamin Franklin could easily be described as what was popularly known in his day as a Renaissance man. He was truly proficient in many fields of discipline and he had a mind that was fascinated with all areas of study and knowledge. As such he brought to the discussions with his fellow founding fathers knowledge of political theory, an awareness of history and an ability to speculate on the perfect union that was crucial to laying the conceptual foundation of what America would come to be when it blossomed into reality. For many, we remember Benjamin Franklin as a great scientist and inventor. And to be sure he qualified in that realm as well. Every schoolboy or girl has that image of him flying that kite to capture electricity to test his theories that are so popular in our mythology of his accomplishments. But these images are no myth for Franklin was truly a great inventor contributing to the world such important innovations as the lightning rod, swim fins, the catheter, the harmonica, and bifocals. In that way, Benjamin Franklin had as much in common with Michelangelo as he did with Thomas Jefferson and indeed he was in good company if listed with either. But it was a political theorist and a philosopher that Franklin made huge contributions to the development of the American experiment in its early formations. It was he who was able to envision the concept of a new American nation. But his talents did not end at his ability to use his powerful mind to envision the future so well. He was also a talented communicator, writer, and teacher so he was able to use his eloquence and magnetic personality to promote the idea of an American nation both within the colonies and internationally. Benjamin Franklin was truly a citizen of the world as he was as comfortable in the courtyards of France as he was in the pubs of Boston. In fact, he was so popular on both sides of the Atlantic that he served as America's first ambassador to France and therein lies one of his greatest contributions to the independence of the new country. 
he was able to use his vast popularity and his trained powers of persuasion to cause the French to enter the battle on the side of the colonies against the British which was a major contributor to the success of the revolution to free America from English control and launch the independent American nation. Franklin's writings have become treasured documents among the archives of this important time in American history. But just as much as his written work, his influence as a thinker, an intellectual and an international diplomat set the standard for others to follow after him and truly established America as a member of the international community of nations. George Washington. It is impossible to reflect on the truly great leadership that has been one of the real blessings of this nation without including the name of George Washington in that list. In fact, in almost anyone's top 10 list of truly great presidents, Washington would almost certainly top the list. His stature in American history is legendary and the respect Americans have for this their first president borders on the adoration of myth. In fact, there is a lot of myth and some humor about our first president that reflects the love people have for this great leader. From the many quips about his supposed wooden teeth to the thousands of places around the nation that proclaim George Washington slept here, to the mythical story of how he threw a silver dollar across the Potomac as a child or his response when he was caught cutting down a cheery tree and responded to the accusation, I cannot tell a lie, Washington's myth is strong in the national memory of this great leader. Washington never set out to become the greatest president of all time or even to be in a position of leadership in the new country he helped to start. He was the one who originated the concept of a citizen president and he believed so strongly in that concept that he refused to run for a third term because his time as citizen leader was over. This tradition was sustained with a little exception until it was codified into part of our constitution in the form of the 22nd Amendment. But before Washington was a great political leader, he showed his tremendous leadership skills on the field of battle. He learned the art of warfare serving honorably in the French and Indian War and his influence and the respect he had earned during that conflict netted him the title of Commander-in-Chief of the American Army when the Continental Congress created that role in 1775. Small wonder when he ascended to the presidency some years later, he carried the responsibility of commander-in-chief with him to the presidency where it continues to reside today even though few of our modern presidents have the military credentials of Washington. When commanding the troops during the Revolutionary War, a famous incident that has been captured beautifully by artists was his decision to cross Delaware in New Jersey to stage a surprise attack and win the battle against the British. It was yet another brilliant maneuver that showed his firm grasp of military strategy and only served to add to his fame and reputation as an outstanding leader of men. After the war, Washington again was interested in retiring from public life but he was never one to turn away when his nation needed him. And needed him it did as he presided over the Continental Congress to assure the successful drafting of the U.S. Constitution. Of the many great accomplishments of his life, his ability to provide leadership and inspiration to that assembly to produce this masterpiece of American political ligature would certainly be ranked as perhaps his finest hour. George Washington was rewarded for his superior leadership skills when he was given the awesome responsibility of serving as the nation's first president of the United States. His wisdom and insight into what the nation needed at the last stage of its early development made him the man of the hour for a struggling republic. Few recognize that one of his greatest contributions to the presidency was recognizing that the nation was torn and weary of war. So using his considerable influence and negotiating skills, Washington signed a number of important treaties that resulted in years of peace that were needed to turn the country from thoughts of war to thoughts of building a great nation. Washington never tired of providing leadership for two terms as the first American president and it was he who decided not to serve a third term and returned once again to private life. But his impact on the nation and the world was profound and long-lasting. It was the kind of nation-shaping influence that truly earned him the title associated with him to this day of father of the nation. John F. Kennedy in the life of this great nation, a few of its presidents have emerged from the pack as truly historic and memorable even more than others. Of course, the presidents from the generation of the Founding Fathers certainly fit that bill including George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. And presidents that served the country in times of great crisis also are deeply honored in memory. 
but in recent memory, there probably no other president that brings up emotions of respect and admiration as much as that of John F. Kennedy. Kennedy seemed to capture the hearts of the American people in a way that was unique in presidents before or since. Part of it may have been the era in history that the country was in when he became the President of the United States. The historic time between 1950 and 1970 was a time when the largest generation of youth, now known as the Baby Boomers, was coming of age. With them a new youth movement brought a sense of optimism, a can-do attitude and to some extent a sense of revolution. They were looking for new ways of seeing things, a new vision of the future and new leadership and John F. Kennedy was the perfect man of the hour to provide that leadership. So much about Kennedy's presidency has an aura of romance and almost a fairy tale excitement of it. From the naming of his family estates, Camelot, to the love affair that the public had with the strikingly beautiful presidential couple, Jack and Jacqueline Kennedy. That touch of magic extended to everything he did and virtually everybody in his family including his younger brother Robert who was idolized as well and almost certainly would have served as president had he not been tragically assassinated during his early bid for that office. But this was not to say that Kennedy was not a phenomenal leader. He faced serious challenges. The Cuban Missile Crisis may have been one of the most frightening showdowns between nuclear Russia and a nuclear America that has ever happened in history. When it became clear that Russia was beginning to build bases in Cuba and arm them with those terrible weapons, this was no time for a weak president. Had Russia been able to bully Kennedy or intimidate the young president and put those missiles in Cuba, it seems certain that the outcome of the Cold War would have been one of failure rather than success. But Kennedy was not bullied or intimidated and using the power of his office, Kennedy stood his ground and stood ground for all Americans and forced the Russians to remove those missiles. But this was not the only great accomplishment of Kennedy's administration. It took a leader who had a great vision and ability to inspire a nation as nobody else than John F. Kennedy could to set the sights of the nation on landing on the moon. But Kennedy put that desire and that high calling in the hearts of his people and the nation rallied to finally see that man step out on the moon and declare, this is one step for man, a giant leap for mankind. That was one of the proudest days in American history and it was Kennedy who inspired us to that kind of greatness. As much as the life and leadership of John F. Kennedy perfectly exemplified the optimism and youthful zeal of a generation, on that sad day of November 22, 1963, when Lee Harvey Oswald gunned down America's beloved president, the hearts of Americans changed forever. This was one of those days that almost everybody who was alive at the time, from school children to grandfathers remembered where they were when they heard the news. Since we laid to rest this great leader, the presidency itself has never been the same. While Americans will always respect their presidents, that sense of adoration for the man in the White House disappeared forever. But the thing that did not disappear was the ongoing adoration of the man, John F. Kennedy, who inspired a generation and a nation to look forward to greatness and in the famous words of his inaugural address in 1961. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country.